Come on, let's give that praise to God. Come on, let's give that glory to God. Come on, I said give it to Jesus. Come on, you can do a little better than that. Come on, let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, somebody make some noise in this house. Somebody make some noise for Jesus in this house. He's good, he's good, he's good. Matter of fact, he's great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify him tonight and we give him all the glory and all the honor. What an unbelievable time we have had it in the Lord this week at Camp Galilee. Amen. At Youth Camp 2017. How many people have enjoyed themselves this week? The services, the fellowship. Amen. Everything has been just top notch. Amen. I do want to, I know it's already been done and it's already been said, but once again, I do want to give honor to your youth president and his wife, brother and sister Brooks. Let's put our hands together one more time for these awesome, for these awesome people of God, awesome couple, beautiful family. Amen. We honor them tonight, their leadership, their sacrifice. We thank God for them. Amen. Also, your youth secretary, brother and sister Anderson, doing a fabulous job as well. Let's give God a praise for them. We thank God for him and his wife as well and their family. Amen. They've been so kind and so hospitable, not only to me, but also uh, to my son this week. Matter of fact, my son is enjoying himself so much, he asked if we could do this again next week. I said, I think it's over tonight. Everybody's going home, buddy. I said, you don't want to go home and see mommy and see your sister? He said, no, nah, they'll be okay. <laughs> Amen. So that's a good sign. He has enjoyed himself thoroughly. <laughs> Amen. So thank you so much to this youth committee. Amen. Awesome, awesome job you guys have done this week. And even Brother Nick with the Jumpstart uh, morning sessions. If I just had half your personality and half your energy, <laughs> amen, I would be all right. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts, while you're standing, the book of Acts. Amen. Thank you to everybody that has played a role from the sound to the media, cleaning team, security, everybody, the kitchen, the cooks, everybody, musicians, singers, everything has been first class and top notch. The book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Amen. Hopefully you help me preach tonight. My voice is trying to escape me tonight, but God is good. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. When you have it, say amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer. Certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Verse 19, and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Highlight, I need you to underscore the last five words of verse 25 of Acts 16. The Bible says, and the prisoners heard them. And the prisoners heard them. Remember those five words. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Tonight, on this last night, I simply want to preach and use as my subject, you have the right to remain loud. You have the right to remain 
loud. Tell somebody next to you, you have the right to remain loud. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. You have the right to remain loud. There is something in our country called the Miranda Warning. It is a right to silence given by police to suspects who have been arrested and apprehended. The police will give them the warning, you have the right to remain silent. And the devil, he has borrowed this in the spiritual realm because there is nothing more satisfying to the devil than a silent Christian. The enemy, he has put us in a place to gauge if we have enough tenacity to speak up. In no uncertain terms, he is testing our vocal cords. Many of us have been silenced by an enemy that presumes we will not speak in the face of wickedness, perversion, or unrighteousness. And sadly, it seems like many have contracted what I call spiritual laryngitis. They have no voice when it comes to declaring holiness and godliness. Some of us have been silent for too long, which gives the consent that we accept what the enemy is doing in our lives, in our churches, in our youth groups, in our communities, in our society as a whole. But it's time for somebody to do what the prophet said to do in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. I refuse to whisper about the things of God. When this world is not shy when it comes to pushing their diabolical agendas. I refuse to use my inside voice when I personally know young people. Who grew up in the apostolic church who are now strung out on prescription drugs and contemplating suicide and addicted to pornography and struggling with their sexuality and intoxicated with the things of the world. There is no way I can be quiet when in our world abortion is a choice instead of a crime. I'm losing my crowd already. I cannot be quiet when in our nation same-sex marriage is a lifestyle instead of a lie. I refuse to be quiet when in our nation Jesus, he is being rejected instead of being celebrated. It's time for the church of the living God to clear its throat and to sound the alarm that God is coming back soon. And you better get right before you get left. Surprisingly, surprisingly, many apostolic churches, they are now, uh, they are changing the way that they have church. Uh, you will be surprised at how many apostolic churches are now uh, trying to mimic other religious groups. So uh, you can travel this nation and go to some apostolic churches uh, and you will be shocked uh, that now many apostolic churches, they only pray silently. Many of them, uh, they are toning down their praise. Uh, they are minimizing their worship. They are ashamed and apologetic uh, for the way that we as apostolics have church uh, I don't know about you and I can't speak for them uh, but I am not ashamed to say uh, that I'm still an apostolic uh, who still believes in praise I still believe in worship I still believe uh, in clapping my hands I still believe uh, in stomping my feet I still believe uh, in running the aisles I still believe uh, in leaping for joy I still believe uh, in and speaking in tongues, I'm still that crazy apostolic uh, who still believes it's okay uh, to get loud when you are in the presence of God. Here's my problem, church. Uh, why is it that nobody else apologizes uh, for what they believe in except the Christian? Uh, an atheist is proud of his denouncement of Jesus. Uh, you can ask any gay activist. They are not bashful uh, in letting you know what they stand for. Uh, there is not one Muslim in the world uh, who will disclaim who Allah is to them. Uh, there is not one Buddhist in the world uh, who will deny what meditation means for them. Uh, there is not even 
find one person uh, who believes in Confucius uh, who will not ascribe to his proverbs, uh, but you can find a Christian uh, walking around with their head down, uh, retracting what they believe in, uh, and second-guessing what they stand for. Uh, there needs to be a spirit of revolution uh, that arises out of this generation uh, that will say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, uh, for it is the power of God uh, unto salvation uh, to everybody that believes. Uh, do I got any radical young folks in here uh, who can say, I'm not going to turn down my gospel music uh, when the world can turn their gospel? They can turn that garbage up. I refuse to hold my head down when I go back to school or work when my classmates and co-workers can talk about how good drugs make them feel. They can talk about how good alcohol makes them feel. They can talk about how good promiscuity makes them feel. I'm going to lift my voice and I'm going to tell them how good the Holy Ghost makes me feel. I'm going to lift my voice and I'm going to say it loud and proud of how much fun I had at summer camp. I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not going to be apologetic for what I believe in and what I stand for. Let me inject this before I get into my text. Uh, if you think that when you come to church, uh, it's supposed to always be soft, uh, it's supposed to always be calm, uh, then somebody told you wrong. Uh, if you think that an apostolic church uh, is not supposed to get loud sometimes, uh, then somebody lied to you. Uh, all right, maybe I'm being too practical. Maybe I'm being too pragmatic. Uh, so let me get biblical here. Uh, Psalms 33 and 3 says, Sing unto him a new song song here it is uh, play skillfully uh, with a loud noise uh, Psalms 98 and 4 says make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord all the earth uh, make a loud noise uh, and this is King James Version uh, make a loud noise uh, and rejoice and sing praise uh, Psalms 150 and 5 says uh, praise him upon the loud symbols uh, praise him upon the high sounding symbols uh, and apostolic churches it's not supposed to be quiet. It's not supposed to be hushed. It's not supposed to be low key. It doesn't supposed to sound like a library or a cemetery or a mortuary. It's supposed to sound like a sanctuary. The atmosphere in an apostolic church, sometimes it ought to be piercing. It ought to be rowdy sometimes. It ought to be thundering. You ought to feel something when you go to an apostolic church. There is an old song that asks the question, what kind of church is this? Uh, I don't know if y'all sing it up north. It asks, what kind of church is this? Uh, and the response was, uh, it's a sanctified church. Uh, it's an apostolic church. Uh, we're a hand clapping church. I said, we're a hand clapping church. We're a foot stomping church. We are an aisle running church. We're a tongue talking church. I know folks in the world call us crazy. I know they think we're out of our mind. Maybe we are. But I'm sorry. I refuse to just duck down and put my tail between my legs and act like I don't have the best thing going. I have Jesus the Christ walking with me and talking with me. How can I be quiet? How can not be intimidated how can I not be loud when I talk about this man every single weekend every single weekend you have fans that pack out sporting arenas and they cheer and they shout and they scream and they high five their neighbor for their favorite athlete whose biggest accomplishment is simply hitting a home run or slamming a basketball or scoring a touchdown every single weekend you have fans who conjugate to entertainment venues where their favorite artist is performing and all they do they sing they snap their fingers and they clap their hands to the beat of a drum uh, somebody that's just entertaining them uh, so how in the world uh, can the outside call us crazy uh, just because we go to church every Sunday uh, and we get loud every weekend uh, I'm sorry honey uh, we're coming to see somebody uh, who does more than win Grammys or Oscars or Golden Globes uh, we're coming to see somebody uh, who does more than just win championships or Super Bowls uh, or World Series uh, but we're coming 
coming to see somebody uh, who died on Calvary's cross. Uh, we're coming to... I can't get no help in this house. Uh, let me preach at the back. Uh, we're coming to the house of God uh, to see somebody uh, who woke us up this morning, uh, who put breath in our lungs, uh, who put us in our right mind. Uh, you can call me crazy all you want. Uh, you can roll your eyes all you want, uh, but that will not stop me uh, from getting loud for Jesus. Uh, you will not silence me. We're not talking about uh, President Trump. Uh, we're not talking about LeBron James. Uh, we're not talking about some secular artist. Uh, we are talking about the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Uh, we're talking about the Rose of Sharon uh, and the Bright and Morning Star. Uh, we're talking about the Lily of the Valley. Uh, we're talking about the Great I Am. Uh, we're talking about the Father, the Son, uh, and the Holy Ghost all in one. Uh, you mean to tell me uh, that don't excite you? Uh, you mean to tell me uh, you won't get loud uh, for that man named Jesus you ought to open your mouth and just take a few seconds uh, and just give God praise uh, just give him glory uh, because nobody else deserves it uh, but him There ought to be something inside of you uh, that when you come into the presence of God, uh, it ought to make you express yourself. Uh, you see, if you didn't know nothing about God, uh, if you didn't have a testimony, uh, it will be all right for you to be quiet. Uh, but seeing uh, everything that God has brought you from, uh, everything that God has brought you through, uh, how dare some of us come to church uh, and not say nothing? Uh, and then we sit down uh, in the presence of God. Uh, and this is what we tell God with our demeanor. Uh, we don't articulate it, uh, but our demeanor says, uh, well, God, you ought to be glad that I showed up. Uh, I'm doing them a favor for showing up. Uh, and I believe sometimes God says, no, 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 you have it backwards. Uh, I'm doing you a favor uh, because I've allowed you to come into my presence. Uh, I allowed you to come into my house. Uh, I could have killed you in your sin last night. Uh, I could have killed you in your and all your mess and your gossip uh, and your fornication. Uh, the death angel could have took you out, uh, but yet my mercy, uh, my grace, uh, my blood covered you. Uh, and I've allowed you to come into my house. Uh, this may be your last time. Uh, I'm doing you a favor. Uh, you ought to praise me. Uh, you ought to worship me. Uh, you ought to thank me uh, for giving me one more chance. If God has liberated you, uh, you have a responsibility to say something. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord uh, say something. Uh, I said it last night. If God uh, has not done anything for you, uh, then you have every right to not say nothing. Uh, but if God has done anything for you, uh, God is looking at you tonight uh, and he's saying, what's wrong with your praise? Uh, what's wrong with your worship? Uh, have I not done enough for you just today? Uh, have I not done enough for you this week? Uh, I'm waiting on some praise. Well, I don't like the preacher. Uh, I don't like what he's talking about. Uh, it's too hot. Who cares about that? Uh, God says, give me praise. Uh, it's not about who's holding this microphone. Uh, it's not about how hot or cold it is. Uh, it's not about what time it is. Uh, the king of kings is in the building. Uh, and somebody got to open up their mouth uh, and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to take us a long time to get there tonight. Hear me now. Uh, when we come to our text, Acts chapter 16, uh, we find our central characters, Paul and Silas. Uh, very familiar story. They are on their way to the temple to pray. Uh, and while they are on their way, hear me now, uh, they are interrupted by a girl who's possessed uh, with the spirit of divination, the spirit of witchcraft. Uh, this girl began to follow Paul and Silas every day uh, until one day Paul got fed up. Uh, 
and he cast that evil spirit out of the girl. Uh, when the girl's masters heard what happened uh, and they realized that now they were getting ready to lose some money uh, because this girl was not under their spell anymore, uh, they captured them, they brought them to the magistrates, uh, accusing them of causing trouble in the city. You know the story. Uh, they were found guilty, they were beating, uh, and they were put into prison. Hear me, young people. Uh, do not think that you will not have uh, any opposition in your life uh, just because you are doing the will of God. Somebody better hear me in here. It's actually the exact opposite because you are trying to join a ministry, because you are trying to start a P7 club in your school, because you are trying to raise money for SFC, because you are trying to live a separated lifestyle, because you are trying to stand out from the crowd and be used by God. The enemy is going to do everything he can to thwart your progress. Hear me now. You will be persecuted. You're going to be lied on and gossiped about uh, and you're going to be shunned uh, but hear me uh, do not let it stop you uh, because greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world uh, hear me now uh, Paul and Silas uh, they have been arrested not for doing the wrong thing but for doing the right thing all right, don't miss this now, church. Not only were they thrown into prison, but the Bible says in verse 24 of Acts 16 that they were thrown into the inner prison. Everybody shout inner prison. Which means that they were thrown into the dungeon. Yeah, they were in isolation and they were in seclusion away from the other prisoners in so much that the Bible said that they had their own guard. If that was not enough, the Bible also says in that same verse that their feet were placed fast in the stocks. But how many people know the devil always makes mistakes? He always makes mistakes. In this particular text, ladies and gentlemen, the devil, uh, he made two crucial mistakes. Hear me now. Uh, he made two crucial mistakes. Uh, the first mistake that the devil made was uh, is that he locked up Paul and Silas's feet, uh, but he did not duct tape their mouth. Let me say it again. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said he locked up Paul and Silas's feet, but he forgot to duct tape their mouth. What he failed to realize is that deliverance does not start in your feet. It don't start with your dancing, your running, or your jumping. Deliverance does not even start in your hands. It don't start in the lifting and the clapping of your hands, but deliverance starts in your mouth. He should have duct taped their mouth. Because the Bible says, uh, if you ask anything in my name, uh, it shall be done. Uh, somebody just opened up your mouth. Uh, because deliverance is it's at the tip of your tongue. Uh, somebody just opened up your mouth right now uh, and start claiming your breakthrough. Uh, start claiming that miracle. Uh, start claiming that miracle. It is in your mouth. All right, that's the first mistake. Uh, the devil locked up their feet, uh, but he forgot to duct tape their mouth. I told you there's two mistakes in this text. Uh, the second mistake that the enemy made, hear me now, y'all, is of significant value. Uh, the devil made a crucial mistake. Uh, is because he should have separated Paul and Silas. He should have separated them, but instead, uh, he locked up Paul and Silas together. Uh, oh, silly devil. Uh, how could you lock up two praisers? and two worshipers in the same jail cell. He must not read his Bible. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus will be in the midst. The 
Bible says where two or three agree and touch on anything it shall be done I said it last night let me say it again that's why when you come to church you make sure you sit next to a praiser you make sure you sit next to a worshiper don't you sit next to some critical spirit don't you sit next to some super deep person who got a nasty attitude don't you sit next to some wet blanket don't sit next to some dead head but you sit next to a praiser you sit next to a worshiper you sit next to somebody who knows how to pull down the glory of God you sit next to somebody who will motivate you to get up and to give God praise I want to sit next to a Paul I want to sit next to a Silas I want to connect myself with somebody who knows how to praise the Lord this is what I tell our church back home in Georgia you got to understand that when you come to the house of God when you come to church always check out the person who's sitting on the end of your pew or the end of your row back home I like to call them the pew captains just scan the crowd very quickly and see who's on the end of your row end of your pew Oh, you sat in the wrong seat tonight. Amen. Amen. Who's ever on the end of your row or your pew, they are the designated pew captain, which simply means their job description is to get the party started. They're supposed some of y'all may have to move your row. They're supposed to lead the charge. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When you come to the house of God, you make sure you sit on the row where the whole row is on fire. That when I dance, you dance just like that. When I shout, you shout just like that. Let's have a road check. Why don't you grab your neighbor and say, can you be Paul for a few seconds? Come on and grab that neighbor and say, can you be Silas for a few moments? And just ask that neighbor, can you help me praise them? Can you help me lift them up? I'm just making sure I'm sitting next to the right person. Come on and grab that neighbor and rock them and shake them and shake them and rock them and say help me lift them up help me praise him we refuse to be quiet on this last night of senior camp I'm just looking for anybody that will help me make some noise in here I'm just looking for anybody that will help me make his praise glorious I'm sorry that might have been the wrong neighbor uh, come on and find somebody else and grab that neighbor uh, and say help me praise him for a few more seconds uh, you may have to step out in the aisle uh, and find somebody else uh, and say I'm just scouting for a praiser right now uh, I'm just scouting for a worshiper right now uh, you ought to grab him by the hand uh, and say let's lift up the name of Jesus uh, let's magnify the name of the Lord uh, I just need some help right now uh, can you be my Paul uh, can you be my Silas uh, and let's just pray Praise the Lord. Let's make some noise until the foundations of the prison are shaken. Come on, that's it. I just need some help. I just need some help. I'm just looking for a worshiper. I'm just looking for a praiser. I don't even have to know your name, but I can feel your spirit. I can feel you a worshiper. I can feel you a praiser. Let's connect and believe right now. Whatever you need in your life, we're going to praise God in advance right now. Whatever you've been seeking in your life, we're going to believe and do it right now together. Hear me now. The very next verse, verse 25 of Acts chapter 16. The Bible says, uh, at midnight, Paul and Silas begin to pray and sing praises unto God. Don't miss this now. Paul and Silas did not sing praises and pray unto God. Hear it. At a safe decibel level. But they looked at each other and said, let's turn up the volume. All right. Paul and Silas. Some of you are saying, I don't see that in the text, Brother Whiteman. Yes, you do. You remember I told you to highlight and underscore five words. Y'all, you didn't do it. I was getting ready to say y'all, but that's my southern dialect. You all. I'm sorry. I've been saying y'all all week, amen, like I'm still in Georgia. You all, is that better? 
It's in the text, verse 25, all right? Somebody saying, Brother Wyman, it does not say Paul and Silas got loud. It just said they sung praises and they prayed. You're trying to hype us up. Show me in the Bible where they got loud, all right? Uh, that same verse, verse 25, the Bible says, uh, after they prayed, after they sang praises, here it is, the prisoners heard them. Hold on. Hold on. You still missed it. Hold on. Now, if Paul and Silas were in the same prison as the other prisoners, that really wouldn't mean much to me. But if you remember, Paul and Silas, study it out, they were in the inner prison. They were in isolation. They were in seclusion. They were nowhere near the main holding cells. Not only were they in the dungeon church, uh, but it was midnight, uh, which meant all lights were out uh, and everybody was sleeping. Uh, but the prisoners heard them uh, because Paul and Silas said, uh, we don't care what time of the night it is. Uh, we don't care if we're in a dungeon. Uh, we don't care if our feet uh, are locked up in stocks. Uh, we don't care if our back has been beat. Uh, we're getting ready to get loud. Uh, so the whole... The whole prison can hear us. We're getting ready to make some noise. We're getting ready to turn up the volume where everybody's gonna. They got loud in their worship. They got loud in their praise. In so much that the Bible says in verse 26 that suddenly an earthquake came and it shook the foundation. Their bands were loosed and the doors of their prison cell was open. Now, somebody hear me tonight. You need to understand, church, that open mouths equal open doors and closed mouths equal closed Closed doors. I don't know who I'm preaching to, young person or adult, but if there are some things in your life that you need deliverance from, open up your mouth. If there's some things back home in your family that you need God to work out, you ought to open up your mouth and don't give God some safe praise. Don't give God some low key praise, but lift your voice and let it come from your diaphragm. Let let it come from your guts. Open up your mouth till it hurts. And shout, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Save my family. Heal my family. Deliver my family. I'm not trying to tell you what to do on this last night. Uh, but if I was, I would tell you not to wait uh, until the battle is over. But go ahead uh, and shout right now. Uh, I know you got stuff waiting for you at home. Uh, I know you got stuff waiting for you at home. Uh, I know you got stuff back home waiting on you. Uh, and you don't know how it's going to work out. Uh, but don't wait till you get back home. Uh, don't wait till you get back to church on Sunday. Uh, go ahead and shout in advance. Uh, go ahead and dance and worship in advance because if God said he's going to do it you can take it to the bank honey it's going to come to pass you ought to shout right now like it's already done you ought to shout right now like it's already happened you ought to dance right now like you've already been healed you ought to praise right now like that backslider has already come back home I'm getting ready to quit, I promise you. Come on, somebody lift your voice a little bit longer. Somebody lift your voice. You have the right to remain loud. Don't be silenced by the world. You have the right to remain loud. All right. We're here now. God, he puts us in precarious predicaments. Not to embarrass us, not to destroy us, not to even break us. But he puts us in these precarious predicaments simply to make us a worshiping witness in the process. Okay. Okay. 
let me explain. Let me explain what I'm saying. Because Paul and Silas didn't get their little feelings hurt. Because Paul and Silas did not murmur and complain and say, I'm doing the will of God. And why our backs had to get beat? Why do we have to get locked up? I'm through with this church business. Through with this God stuff. I had it better when I wasn't working for him. Of course, it may seem like that because the devil ain't going to mess with you if you're walking with him. Y'all were on the same team, but once you turned around, that's when all hell started breaking loose in your life. Paul and Silas said, you know what, man, this, this may be our last night. Uh, this may be our last chance. I don't know. Let's just give it all we got. Uh, uh, you sing, I pray, and we switch. Uh, but let's not do it at a safe level, but let's get loud. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. And here it is right here. Because they turned up the volume. Because they got loud in their worship and in their praise. Not only were their chains loose. But all the other prisoners. Who were nowhere around. Didn't praise, didn't sing, nothing. All of their chains were loosed. All of their prison doors were open. Not only, not only that, y'all. I'm sorry, you all. Not only that, but the same jailer that locked them up, beat their backs, threw them in the dungeon. He said, you know what? Come home with me. Hold on, I was just a felon a few, a few minutes ago. You just locked me up in prison. Now you invite me into your home? Paul and Silas went to that man's home. They fed him. They cleaned them up. They washed all the stripes. And they gave them some chicken noodle soup and some lemonade. And Paul and Silas sat down and taught them a Bible study. And the jailer and his whole house was baptized and saved simply because two men didn't murmur, didn't complain, didn't throw in their towel, didn't turn their back, but they got loud and they worshiped and they prayed until until something happens. Uh, you better hear me, young person. You better hear me. Uh, do not ever think that your praise uh, and your worship is only for you. Uh, don't think that your praise uh, and your worship uh, is only limited into the tabernacle that you are in. Uh, but you can get to a place in God uh, that your worship uh, and your praise uh, can start freeing people all the way in the back. Uh, it can start freeing people uh, who don't want to be free. Uh, it can start freeing and people uh, back at your house uh, in your family uh, that's why worship is important uh, that's why praise is imperative uh, I'm trying to free my whole family uh, I'm trying to free my whole youth group uh, I'm trying to free uh, everybody that's connected to me uh, I need everybody to stand up right now uh, and just lift your voice right now uh, open your mouth come on musicians let's ride uh, open your mouth Come on, that's it. Your praise is not only freeing you, but your praise is freeing everybody in your family. Your worship has the ability to release everybody that's connected to you. Come on, that's it. Shout for your brother. Shout for your sister. Worship for your mother. Worship for your father. Worship for your backslid friend. Worship for your classmate. Worship for your neighbor. Praise for your... You're freeing somebody around you. You're freeing somebody around you. Somebody behind you is being free right now. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Somebody around you is being free right now. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Somebody in front of you, chains are falling off. Chains are falling off. Hey! Hey! You have the right to remain alive. Hallelujah! Somebody scream. Somebody 
scream. Somebody holler. Somebody. Somebody shout until you fill it in your stomach. Hallelujah. Hey, Akasaka Rabakosaka. Worship. 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 Your worship can travel. Your worship can travel. Your worship is opening doors right now. Come on, that's it. From the back to the front. Everybody worship. Everybody set an atmosphere. If you can use your voice, open your mouth and holler. Hey! Jesus! Jesus! I need deliverance! I need a breakthrough! I need something from you! My family needs you! My friends need you! Jesus! I'm gonna shout till I have no voice left! Jesus! Jesus! I'm still worshiping you! I'm still praising you! I'm still loving you! You have the right to remain loud! You can't silence me! You can't silence me! You can't hush me up! Because I have the right. To remain loud. Live out loud young people. Live out loud young people. Don't be ashamed. Be proud. Live out loud. In this culture. Live out loud. In this generation. Live out loud. I'm an apostolic. I'm an apostolic. I'm an apostolic. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm loud and I'm proud. Hey! Akarabakosaka. Stay right here for a few minutes. I want you right now all across the house. All across the house. Your biggest obstacle right now. I know we've had a great week of camp. People have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Lives have been changed. I've been blessed this week. But if we be honest, all of us in here, there's something that all of us, if we be honest, we're fretting going back home to. All this is fine in here. All this is good and dandy in here. But maybe there's an issue in, in our parents' marriage or maybe there's some financial issues or maybe there's somebody sick or there's just something going on that although we feel good in here, I'm a little apprehensive, I'm a little nervous about going back home because I still got to face this same situation. Whatever that situation is in your life, I want you to get it in, your, in front of you right now. I want you to put it in front of you right now. It may be a stronghold, it may be a sickness, it may be a mountain, it may be an obstacle, whatever it is, get it in front of your face right now. It may be a person that you got to face, that you're regretting, you're hating having to go back home and see this person again. I want you to put it in front of your face right now. I feel God in this house. Come on, that's it, put it in front of your face. The devil's been trying to intimidate you. He's been trying to scare you. But get that issue in front of you right now. And I'm getting ready to count to three. And when I get to three, I want you to raise your voice as loud as you can. 
but I want you to raise it not in fear not in intimidation not in anxiety but you're gonna raise your voice in victory are you ready one put it in front of your face put it in front of your face put that problem in your face put that person in your face are you ready two Get ready, get ready, get ready. Three. Let it go! 